Well, hello, retro game players. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Marcus, and welcome to another episode of my top 10 NES classics from 1986. Let's check them out. Nintendo Entertainment System. The Nintendo Entertainment System. Now you're playing with power. No. All right, coming in at the bottom of the list, I will say this game pretty much deserves to be at the bottom of the list, but be included, and that's why it's here. It's a Capcom game, it's an early shoot 'em up on the system, but man, the soundtrack is painful. 1942, uh, this is actually a really fun game. Um, it's tough, you know, um, you don't really have much as far as uh, other ammo, you can't upgrade your ship. You get more um, bullets and that's cool. Uh, you have this weird like loop that you can do to avoid you know, getting hit. Um, it's definitely an intense shooter, but oh man, the soundtrack is, is horrible. It's just horrible. It's like this military sort of drumming sound, I guess. I don't know what they're doing, but it's better to put on your favorite music and just play it because then it becomes a whole new experience. And, and it's, it's actually really addicting to play this game. So. Um, the arcade game, of course, is better, but this is a pretty fun port, so that's why it's number 10. Let's check out number 9. Number 9. Alright, coming in at number 9 is a game that's a very uh, different light gun game. That's one way to sum it up. So usually when you think of a light gun game, you see some kind of field where guys are popping up, you're shooting them. Uh, on rails sometimes, you know, where you're going through a scene and things show up, and that's a typical like gun game. This one is completely different, it's completely unique, and in the last video, the 1985 list, there was a lot of people in there talking about this game, so here it is, number nine, Gumshoe. Now, Gumshoe is a very unique game where you actually are not shooting, you do shoot the enemies a little bit as they come at your character, who's this kind of sly detective looking dude, but you really shoot him to make him jump to get points. And you can actually even do double jumps. You can shoot him twice and he'll jump twice. Um, this game is actually pretty fun to play, although it's pretty tough and you have to be on your A game. It's harder than a lot of light gun games, I'd say, even at the time, just because it's a weird formula. It's like, not only are you shooting your own guy, but you're shooting obstacles that may be flying at him. And for the life of me, there's this car that comes from the left side of the screen nothing just just it sucks it's just always there but you can jump over it you can either shoot it or jump over it but yeah gumshoe is a pretty cool game uh it has interesting level design too so there are some different levels and stuff but there you go that's number nine let's check out number eight number eight all right number eight is a very challenging action platformer and it's got some charm to it, that's for sure. It's by Bandai, and uh, it's based on a manga comic. Something like Gigigi no Kotaro, or something like that. I'm not really sure, but uh, we didn't get that. Unfortunately, I guess they stripped out the Japanese manga references and just called it Ninja Kid. So Ninja Kid is this game that um, is actually pretty good controlling-wise. I mean, it's and one thing I like is you can you know, you run around, you shoot these like shurikens or whatever they are, darts, I don't know. I guess they're shurikens, but you run around, you shoot those at enemies. You have to do different things um, to get through each stage, which is kind of unique. So like uh, when you start, there's like this overhead world map and you go to these different castles and fight. They're kind of like different dungeons. And it actually, it's not random, I don't think, but it has different maps that load depending on how you start so like if you start one time the castles will be in one location start a new game they're in a different location 
But anyway, you beat each one of these like castles or whatever they are, and um, then it opens up a doorway, you can leave. Then there's an actual boss battle, which is kind of simple, but interesting. And as you progress around the map, you finally get to a main castle where you can fight um, another boss, which is like, you know, much cooler. But all in all, this game is really tough, um, but you kind of get the hang of it. And there's this one level two where you have to actually like move this little flame around and you have to like kind of move the flame while you're walking around and the flame will light up candles. And until you light up all the candles, the level never ends. So it's definitely pretty fun. The graphics are pretty charming, like I said before. Ninja Kid himself seems real positive. You know, he's got a good outlook, outlook on life. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's a good game and that's why it comes in at number eight. Let's move up to number seven. Number seven. All right, number seven comes in at a game that I uh, remember playing with my friend. And honestly, um, it was this friend that uh, always we would always rent these games and play like two-player battle games all the time. And uh, anyway, this was one of his favorites because he was always kicking my ass. And um, eventually I got pretty good at it and I started to really love this game actually. So I'm talking about Tag Team Wrestling. Um, it's one of Data East's early games I think on the system too. And it's, it's actually pretty fun. Um, it's, uh, it's not great, you know, but the graphics are bright. Um, I do like that you can actually do tag team, which is cool. So if you're in trouble, you can run over and, uh, you know, have their, your buddy jump in there and take over the battle. Um, you can get out of the ring. Um, you can do suplexes and, uh, of course the pinning mechanic is easy, which is nice. Sometimes wrestling games, they make that really weird. Um, it's real simple, you know, you just fight, your health goes up and down, and whoever is low enough, then you want to pin them, and then that's the end of the game. It's definitely a fun two-player game. I would say playing by yourself is fine, but get ready because the computer is going to bring it. So it's definitely pretty cool. Um, no licensed characters at all, but all in all, it's definitely a fun two-player game, so that's Tag Team Wrestling coming at seven. Let's go to six. No. All right, coming in at number six, it's a very special arcade style game. Very, very colorful, very reminiscent of, uh, I would say, something that, again, Fix-It Felix was sort of inspired on. So fits right up there with Wrecking Crew, um, that old school kind of Nintendo clunky looking pixelated guys, but they're big, um, simple gameplay. And here it is, Urban Champion. Now, Urban Champion, is a game that honestly, as I started to record the footage for this, I could not stop playing it because it's this constant battle of left to right through different screens, basically. You're really only fighting one dude, all right? This one dude, and you square off under a building. You can do quick jabs, quick punches to the face or to the chest or stomach, and then you have a strong punch, which if you connect that, lands that dude on his feet, but he'll do the same to you. Um, Meanwhile, there's this lady walking around. She'll drop flower pots. You got to watch out for those. Occasionally, a police car will drive by and you both run to the corners and stand there and whistle like nonchalantly, like nothing's going on. And then as soon as that cop's gone, you run back and battle again. What's cool about this game is that as you beat that guy up, the screen, once he gets to the edge, he'll roll to the next screen, which is similar to like, uh, you know, those multi-level backgrounds and games like Dead or Alive. Um, Dead or Alive 2, I don't know, it's just kind of what it reminds me of. But anyway, the screen is there, he comes to the new screen, you fight him some more, and as you go to the right, you'll eventually get to a screen with a sewer manhole that's open, and you can knock him down into that, and once he goes into that, then you're celebrated. The lady up above who was throw, throwing uh, flowers is now throwing confetti, she's into you at this point, and uh, it's actually just so cool. Then it starts again and you fight the guy again. What reminds me though too, is it actually reminds me um, similarly to that never ending epic battle in They Live. Like it just keeps going and you're just like fighting this dude, the cops go by, you stop, ladies are throwing stuff down to get you to quit. Um, anyway, this game is classic. It's classic Nintendo. It's classic old school arcade style. And uh, that's why it's number six. So. There you go. Now, before we go to number five, I think we have a special word from our sponsor. Let's check it out. I'm not even stuck. 
ファミコンソフトになった侵入経路は無限に広がる未知との戦いは今始まった全宇宙を飲み込んだ超スペースファイターグラディウストナミー Okay, here we are, halfway through the list. Five more games to go. The first one is one of the most classic, iconic Nintendo arcade games out there.、Um, the only reason it's located midway through this list is that to me, it doesn't.、Uh, I guess I've overused or overextended my nostalgia for it. I've played it so many times. It、um, is a classic game. If you have not played it, you must play it. And it still holds the charm、um, that it originally had, and that's Donkey Kong. So, this game,、uh, when it first came out, I was playing this. I remember definitely playing this one at a pizza parlor the very first time, thinking it was very colorful, very unique. And、uh, when it finally came on to Atari 2600, Uh, I love that game. I actually played the crap out of that, thought it was a blast, but when it finally came on Nintendo, that's when it had the most, I'd say, accurate arcade port so far, I'm pretty sure. And at least that I've ever seen, you know? So it's a blast to play.、Um, there's really only like three total levels, but they just loop and they get harder. So the first one is the classic staircase、um, where you go up. And you're you know, trying to get to Donkey Kong.、Uh, you need to rescue the princess, which actually, if I remember right, she's some other princess, but you'd think she's Peach. I don't think she is.、Uh, and then you go to the next stage where there's some elevators. And then the third level, you're actually just like kind of breaking the entire thing by、um, destroying it, making it fall upon itself. So, anyway, it's a classic game. It、um, also has some pretty cool music at the title screen. Um, if you boot that up and listen to it, it's, it's actually in Donkey Kong Country, which is kind of cool. So, anyway, number five, Donkey Kong. This is a classic, classic Nintendo arcade game. So, that's why it's on this list. Let's check out number four. All right, number four is a Capcom game. And this is one of those games that started to pop up. Um, in the early 80s, where you're a soldier, you're a mercenary, you know, and you're running through the field, taking on bullets, trying to stay alive, getting in different vehicles.、Uh, actually, I don't think it happens in this game, but that sort of game. Guerrilla War was also in the arcades, but here it is Commando. And Commando is actually a really fun game. It's actually pretty tough, but there's some tricks that you can、uh, kind of get by it a little easier. So, one of them is that. When you're dropped off in this first field and you start running, guys are coming everywhere. And it's so easy to kind of get overwhelmed and just start shooting everybody. But what you got to remember is you can actually run through them. So you can actually keep progressing. That's sort of what you want to do. Keep moving, stick and move, go up the, the、uh, field, use your grenades when you can.、Um, there's just so much going on. It's super action packed, it reminds you of an 80s action movie. And、uh, yeah, I just remember playing this back in the day. Um, getting really upset actually、um, at certain deaths, but I'll be honest, the、uh, hit detection is pretty accurate. Like, you don't feel like it's really the game's fault when you die. You feel like, oh, dude, I walked into that. I mean, there's times where the bullet will go right by you and you just barely miss it, you know? Just barely miss it. So, anyway, Commando is an awesome game, and、uh, that's why it's number four. So, we've got three left. Let's check out what number three is. All right, we're down to only three, so here we go. There's some good games on this top three, that's for sure. First up, it's Satoru Iwata's classic game, Balloon Fight. Now, Balloon Fight is an awesome arcade style game where you basically are this little dude with two balloons, you take to the skies, and you battle enemies,、um, and they have one balloon, and you want to go and pop their balloon、um, by getting above them. Very similar to Joust, actually. So, you want to be above them at all times.、Uh, 
uh, pop their balloons. As they're falling, they'll have a little uh, umbrella. You can swoop down and knock them down. It'll make them fall faster. And uh, if they land in the water, they die. And if they land on the ground, they'll sit there and they'll kind of recover and try and blow up a balloon. But you can run around and knock them off and basically kill them. When they land in the water, they also, or when they die, they, they spawn this little bubble that gives you points too. So you want to grab that. But the gameplay is extremely addicting. It's a classic arcade style, super colorful. Um, each level gets tougher and tougher. It is so fun to play. Like, I, I have a hard time actually um, putting this one down. Every time I want to, you know, check it out, it's it's actually ends up taking like an hour of my time. So this one's a classic. There's also like a side scrolling um, option that you can do where you kind of go and um, as you fly, you avoid um, these spikes in the air and you just see how far you can go. And uh, that's actually a really fun one too. I think it's called Balloon Trip. Um, and the way also that you control it is similar to Joust where you tap to fly and the faster you tap, the higher you go. So it's really cool, classic game, excellent design, excellent graphics, and actually pretty cool music too. So that's Balloon Fight. That's why it's number three. Let's check out number two. All right, we've only got two games remaining, and this one's amazing, in my opinion. Uh, you either pronounce it Gradius or Gradius. I personally say Gradius, and I'll tell you why. I grew up saying Gradius. All my friends said Gradius. We all did. It was just what we called it. I don't know if that's some kind of, you know, West Coast twang or whatever, but that's what we all called it. Um, so you can call it whatever the hell you want, all right? But this game is awesome. It's early Konami. It's tough. It's one-hit deaths. Um, it's pretty cool. It's just got a good vibe going to it. The sequel, or the unofficial sequel, is phenomenal as well. Um, and I'll talk about that later. But uh, as far as a shoot 'em up, this is such a great game. An old school Konami classic. So definitely check this one out. This is why it's number two. Um, this one will challenge you to your core, and it's just worth playing. So let's move on to number one. Oh man, here we are at number one. Nine awesome games we went through, you guys. Um, this next one is not only an amazing game, not only deserves to be on this top ten list of 1986, but it could be on a top ten list of all NES games, in my opinion. This game uh, holds dear to me. I remember renting this and literally uh, scaring the crap out of myself playing this game. It just freaked me out. I was at the right age. Zombies freaked me out at the time. It just freaked me out. What can I say? It's Ghost and Goblins. This is so tough. You only get two hits. Um, it's an easy way to die on everything. You know, um, things are constantly respawning. The music is phenomenal. The story is pretty cool. The overworld map that you see, how you progress, is something that, uh, that's an awesome scene in itself, you know? And similarly, I, I want to say this too, that same style screen is in another game called Wizards and Warriors, which came out later, um, which I ended up falling in love with, and even the sequel to that, um, because it was not so, so tough, you know? This one is extremely brutal. When I was a kid playing this, I remember renting it, and I was just like, this is crazy, but it freaked me out. It challenged me to keep going, even after I died 40, 50 times, you know? It just was like, it, it would be one of those things also where I'd get fed up, turn off the NES, go ride my bike for a couple hours, come back, sit down, and I'd play again, and I'd make it farther. Um, I ended up renting this like five times. Like, I loved it. I wish that um, I had it as a kid, which I did not. I just would rent it. So, classic game, amazing game, that's why it's number one. Thank you Capcom for doing something cool back then. And uh, that concludes this top 10 list, you guys, of 86. So, thank you so much for watching. There will be more episodes. And until next time, you know what to do. You keep that shit retro by playing with your old Nintendo Entertainment System later on. <laughs>